of Infinity Foundation, a not-for-profit organization in Princeton, New Jersey, which he founded in 1995 with his own funds. Mr. Malhotra is an Indian-American entrepreneur, philanthropist, and community leader who has devoted himself full-time with his own mind and efforts for the last 10 years to clarify many misinterpretations about the Indic traditions in America and among the Indians ourselves. Rajiv has, closely been, has been working closely with Puja Samaji for global peace and for promoting harmony and mutual respect. Now I request Mr. Malhotra to address us. Mr. Malhotra. Puja Swamiji, it's indeed an honor to be invited here. I was asked to share a few moments on the topic of Hindu identity. For the past few months, I've conducted several brainstorms, workshops on issues concerning Hindus, both in the United States and in India, including and especially among youth and based on listening mainly asking what is on your mind what bothers you what do you want to resolve but listening to a large number of people i'd like to share with you what i've crystallized as the main issues that we face so that discussions can start in a very crisp way on these issues the central overriding issue I have identified, I think we ought to really think about and discuss more, is the issue of Hindu identity. And Hindu identity, I divide into three, three kinds of issues under the overall Hindu identity. First is a very important question. Why do we even need a Hindu identity? And this is a very, very important point that comes up over and over again. And I will focus on this, but let me just deal with briefly the other two. Once a person has crossed the first hurdle of why do we need a Hindu identity, then the second question is, what is the Hindu identity? What does it mean to be a Hindu? Because we don't have one historical event, which is the defining event, which has a canon, which has been frozen and fixed. Uh, we don't have that as a available, definable concept. There are many texts. Some people ask me, what is your book? And I tell them we have a whole library. And because of the very nature of revelation and the rishis and the, the idea of living enlightenment means that we have, a, we have an inexhaustible supply of enlightened gurus all through our history and hence a huge corpus of knowledge. So what exactly is my Hindu identity? Is it about a deity? Is it about a Purana? Is it about Vedas? Is it about yoga? This is an important second issue. Only after you've crossed the first issue do we even need a Hindu identity. So once you, we, we are, a person is sure we need a Hindu identity and once they've gone through the second process of defining what is the Hindu identity, then comes the third which is how do we project this Hindu identity in a respectable manner as Americans, as modern people, as postmodern people, and so on. So these are the three. Why Hindu identity is needed? What is the Hindu identity? How do you project it? So the what, the, the why, what, and how of the identity, I feel is the main, uh, is a kind of an important issue that Hindus have not dealt with enough. Now the first of these three, why do we need a Hindu identity? That's what I'd like to spend a couple of minutes on. I find that there are three major blockages when you ask people about, discuss about Hindu identity. It turns out that there are three major blockages that people have. The first blockage is, will identity be 
a source of tension, divisiveness? Will it divide us up? Will it uh, create a conflict? And that's a stumbling block. Now, in response to that, what I would offer for you to think about is the following. There indeed are certain kinds of identities in this world which are divisive. Because they claim exclusivity. If an identity claims exclusivity, that means for me to be valid, you cannot be valid. For me to be right, for my text to be valid, anything that's different must be invalidated. It has to be dealt with, maybe with violence, maybe with non-violence, but it has to be dealt with and it cannot be considered valid. Such an identity, of course, creates conflict. And such an identity can, at best, offer tolerance. But tolerance is a very patronizing term. It means that I don't really think you're legitimate, but I put up with you. That's kind of a tolerance. Luckily, Hinduism doesn't have this problem because Hindus do not claim exclusivity and Hindus do offer mutual respect rather than just tolerance. In fact, in many interfaith dialogues, they try to have a resolution where everybody says we offer tolerance, we will tolerate each other. And invariably, I stand up and say, let's edit that phrase, remove the word tolerance, and put in the word mutual respect. It's, it's amazing how much controversy that creates. People are not willing to offer mutual respect because by offering you respect for your religion, I have validated your religion. And when I have validated your religion, then I can no longer claim my exclusivity. And if I can no longer claim my exclusivity, I'm going to be blamed by people in my faith for violating one of my injunctions, one of my requirements. So this business of, this business of shifting the discussion from tolerance to mutual respect it can have a huge cascading effect and I would like all of you to try it whenever you go to an interfaith issue, talk about mutual respect and explain why it's not the same thing as tolerance because mutual respect says you're legitimate in what you're doing and I want you to consider me legitimate as what, what I am doing in my faith. And this is something Hindus can contribute to the world very proudly as one of the most important contributions the world needs right now. And Hinduism has that to offer. So the first hurdle to having a Hindu identity, which says, well, maybe it will create tension, maybe it will create conflict, I think we can resolve. In fact, if more people claim an identity and which sets the example of positive mutual respect for each other that would actually help reduce tensions because you, we would take a moral high ground and ask other religions to match us and do the same and offer mutual respect and if everybody were to start doing that it would actually reduce tensions. So claiming Hindu identity which includes mutual respect is not a problem. So the, the second issue the second blockage uh, for having a Hindu identity, which comes up a lot in the conversations, is we're now all Americans. Why does it matter if you're Indian or Japanese or Chinese? And why does it matter if you're Hindu or Muslim? We're all Americans now. So let's not, uh, uh, you know, let's, let's just be Americans. Why do we need all these things? This is an important discussion on the nature of America. First of all, America respects and expects hyphenated identities. I mean, there, as far as national identities are concerned, there are Irish Americans, there are Italian Americans, there are Hispanic Americans, there are Japanese Americans, there are African Americans. And this is not considered a problem. This is the very fabric of America. This is what makes America distinct and unique. And, and therefore, for us to also have a hyphenated identity while also being American is not a problem and is not a contradiction. Secondly, as far as religious identities are concerned, again, America is very pluralistic, expects people to have a positive religious identity. It's perfectly okay for a person to say, I'm Jewish American, or I'm Buddhist, or Muslim, or I'm a, a, you know, Presbyterian, I'm Catholic, I'm a Methodist, I'm whatever, Baptist. And therefore, it is okay 
for you as a, as a bona fide American uh, to be a Hindu at the same time, and it does not undermine your Americanness. In fact, a lot of my work, which involves uh, you know engaging uh, to correct stereotypes and biases and things of that sort, a lot of times I come across very well-meaning offers from Americans, be it the local school or the media or anybody, saying, "Okay, we are very happy that finally a Hindu has come who wants to discuss what Hinduism means, because our problem is that we don't have enough Hindus who want to claim their identity and explain it to us." So the, it is not the problem from the American side that we cannot assert our identity. It is a problem from the Hindu side that we have chosen not to do so. And so if you, if, if you go to your local media or school or colleges or any place and you want to participate in religious dialogues as a Hindu, very explicitly calling it a Hindu and not some generic spirituality and new age and everything is the same kind of thing, where you're really hiding because they're shameful or, or fearful, but very positively saying we're Hindus and this is what we stand for, I don't think that in most cases you will, you will experience any resistance. In fact, you will be welcome. So the first obstacle, which was, does identity cause tension, I addressed. The second issue is, does uh, identity conflict with being an American, I also addressed. My third blockage that I come across is the most serious blockage, the most serious blockage, because that comes from internally within our own tradition. And this is where I really respect Puja Swamiji as one of the exemplars of, of remedying this particular confusion that a lot of Hindus have and a lot of Hindu acharyas and gurus and swamis actually propagate this confusion. And this has to do with the following. Uh, at recently, at, uh, I was with uh, Swami Jyoti Mayanand at uh, intergenerational dialogue in Orlando with Hindu kids. And they would always raise the hand up and say, but we were told everything is Maya, so why do I have to be Hindu? I could be, I could be a Muslim tomorrow, I could be a Christian, I could be, it doesn't matter, does it really matter? It's all Mithya and it's all Maya. So a quick cop out. The idea that Advait has taught us non-dualism and therefore there is no such thing as my identity. We were told that this identity is a stumbling block and we should get rid of it. Indeed, you can quote Advaita to actually reach that conclusion. And, that, and the unfortunate thing is that a lot of people do that. And a lot of people, when they're discussing against a Hindu, will quickly put the Hindu on the defensive saying, ah, but see, you are not supposed to have an identity because you believe in Advaita, so there is nothing you can defend. If you try to defend something, then you are not being, uh, you are into Dvait and you are into dualism. So the Hindu gets very nervous about it. And this is, this is something theological. It's a philosophical uh, and, uh, issue that our gurus and acharyas really, really need to take up. You come back and say, well, you know, in the Gita, Arjun is asked to actually take claim of an identity. There are Kauravs and there are Pandavas. And to carry out his dharma, he has to take on, he's a Kshatriya. All those are identities. Being a Kshatriya is an identity. Being a Kaurav, being a Pandav, that's an identity. He is told, in fact, that uh, you have a work to do. You cannot just, uh, be in, the, in the idea of non-dualism, run away from work. Most Indians and Hindus I know, in their mundane life, when you leave this ashram and go back to New York or wherever, you'll be very competitive people. You're not going to say to your kids, you know, flunk the SATs because it's all with you. And if you, are a, if you are a surgeon, you're not going to say, you know, whether the patient lives or dies, it's all Maya anyway. And, and you know, if I got sued, that suing is also Maya. And if they throw me in jail, that jail would actually be just Maya. I think there are no, I don't think Hindus are such naive and such moronic people when it comes to their own personal life. People, Hindus are exceedingly competitive very sharp businessmen, very, uh, uh, very skillful negotiators for their own personal stake. When it's their own personal stake, the Hindu is very, very clear about these matters. So if, you, if we cannot bring our jnana into daily life and perform the role in Leela where you have an identity, because in Leela you have an identity, you're performing Bhagwan's Leela with an identity, in, on, in a theater, 
if you've been given, if you've been casted by the director to perform a certain role, you cannot be mixed up and say, well, you know, I'll perform all the roles. You have to perform that role. Because that's what role you have been given. So if you see life as Leela, you've been given a role, that role has an identity. If we don't get this point, then we will be schizophrenic Hindus. There will be a Hinduism in the ashram, and a non-Hinduism blocked out the chip, Hindu chip will have to be turned off when you go and live your life. Because you'll be told, you'll be thinking, well, you know, now I want to be practical, I have to compete, I have to uh, get my insurance forms, I have to fill out all these things and, and live in a world where I negotiate with my boss, I want a promotion, I want a good job. All those things require me to have an identity, but since Hinduism tells me not to have an identity, then I turn off my Hindu chip and become somebody else. And then when I go back to the ashram, I'll forget that and jump and turn on the Hindu chip and become non-doer and everything is happening and everything is safe. This, uh, this bifurcated non-dualism in one realm when you are within acharya in an ashram and then jumping into some other mode which is contradictory will create a bipolar kind of uh, society and we have a lot of people who suffer from that. So this issue of living the full life, not only the adhyatmic life, but also the social life, carrying out one's dharma, playing the leela, performing the role, which involves having an identity, and, and, the, and the idea of an ultimate reality which is non-dual, and a provisional reality which is the kurukshetra, and the karmakshetra, and the dharmakshetra, where we have to perform roles, and therefore we have to have an identity. I think this is the central issue then the central source of confusion, which is preventing a lot of people from claiming Hindu identity. So I leave with that with the request that this is an open conversation we ought to start. It is not a simple thing you can fix in five or ten minutes, but this topic itself needs to be on the agenda for Hindu discussions, which I hope Pooja Swamiji's leadership will lead us to. Thank you.